Mobile phones play a fundamental role in telecommunications and are now essential devices in everyday life. But how come a so small device allows us to communicate with any person around the world, no matter where we are? In this video, we will explain how your mobile phone is able to transfer the call and why there are many generations of mobile networks. The modern mobile phones are able to transfer the calls thanks to the support of the MSC, acronym for Mobile Switching Centers, which, as we will see, contains the main information of your SIM cards and provides the transfer of the calls to the right recipients. JAS is constantly engaged in the supply of all those spare parts necessary for the proper functioning of the mobile switching centers, which they need to be constantly working 24 hours a day. Hours a day. Let's try to get a closer look of the main components of a mobile phone, which are responsible for the call transfer. When you want to start a phone conversation, your voice is recorded by a microphone. The microphone is nothing but a detector and a sound converter, which converts sound pressure into electric signal. Once the sound wave of your voice has been transformed into an electrical signal, this signal is sampled by a tiny sensor inside the phone, called MEMS sensor. This sensor basically samples the electric wave of your voice many times per second and digitizes it. Thus, we pass from the analog world to the digital world, since the wave is converted into discrete values, represented by a sequence of zeros and ones. In this way, your voice, after being transformed into a digital signal, can be easily memorized and eventually sent through the antenna. The antenna sends the digital signal of your voice in the form of an electromagnetic wave. This wave is able to transmit the zeros and ones of the signal by modifying its amplitude, frequency, and period values, or even changing their configuration. Taking the example of frequency, the zeros are transmitted in the form of a low-frequency wave, while the ones are transmitted in the form of a high-frequency wave. The electromagnetic wave containing the information of your voice must be able to reach the phone receiver of the person with whom you want to talk. Unfortunately, Electromagnetic waves are not able to travel long distances and lose their power whenever their trajectory is deviated by large buildings, electronic devices, or in the presence of bad weather conditions. But even if there are no obstacles along the wave trajectory, its linear path could not go on forever due to the curvature of the Earth. For this reason, special antennas are installed. The so-called Cellular radio towers, which use cellular technology to transmit the electromagnetic wave to their right recipient. Cell towers are distributed throughout the territory in order to divide it into many hexagonal areas. Each area is simply called cell and has its own antenna with its own frequency bands. Usually, cells are connected to each other by radio bridges or specific optical fiber cables placed under the ground, or even under water, to ensure national and international connections. As we've already said, the electromagnetic wave produced by your phone contains the information of your voice. This wave is collected by the antennas of the cell tower of the hexagonal area in which you find yourself. The radio cell converts the wave into light pulses which are subsequently transferred and collected at the base of the cell tower, right inside the transceiver module. After processing the signal, the transceiver sends the latter to the radio cell of destination. The radio cell of destination, in turn, re-elaborates the received signals and transmits it again in the form of an electromagnetic wave to the mobile phone of the person you want to talk to. At this stage, the signal undergoes the inverse process, so the wave containing the information of your voice is converted into an electrical signal and subsequently into sound, so your voice can now be heard by the receiver. We can therefore say that the mobile communication network is not only wireless, but also uses landline technology too to transfer the call from your phone to the recipient's phone. But how does your cell tower know 
What is the exact location of the cell tower of the recipient of your call? Thanks to the Mobile Switching Center. The Mobile Switching Center is nothing but a telephone switching center for mobile radio users and can simply be defined as the electronic evolution of the switchboard, in which the operator manually patched through the calls to the right recipients. The MSC therefore represents the central point for a group of cell towers, since inside it contains all the information stored in the SIM card of a group of telephone users. So, the MSC that recorded the information of your SIM card in its database is called Home MSC. This information can be the serial number of the SIM, the location area identifier, that is, the last visited geographical area, but also the service plan, the PIN code, but above all, the telephone number. If you travel outside the geographical area covered by your home MSC, a new MSC will handle your calls, communicating with your home MSC. That will always know your cell location, and therefore will correctly direct your incoming calls to your phone. A technique of your MSC to know exactly your geographical area is to periodically update information on your position. This update takes place whenever you're moving through a certain number of cell towers. To better understand these dynamics, we can take the example of a typical call made by a plant technician who wants to contact Jaes to have a direct feedback on the supply of an industrial spare part that should be replaced in the plant as soon as possible. When the technician dials the mobile phone number of Jaes on his phone, the call request arrives at his home MSC. His home MSC, in turn, provides to send the request to Jaes home MSC. Now, Jaes home MSC checks what is the current Jaes MSC to see if the Jaes operators are in the central office or if they are engaged in other plants. Luckily, the operator who answers the call is always present at the Jaius headquarters and he can immediately answer the call. If Jaius operator is out of the office, Jaius Home MSC simply sends the call request to the MSC of the corresponding geographical area. When we talk about mobile communication, we need to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum, that is, the set of all the possible frequencies of the electromagnetic radiations mentioned at the beginning of this video. Users are in fact in a certain range of frequency, which means that their phone devices have a specific bandwidth that is different from all the others. But if we look at the billions of mobile phone owners around the world, we can notice that the frequency spectrum available is quite limited. For this purpose, many bandwidth are carefully distributed in different cell towers, so as to be distributed among the active users in that specific geographical area. Mobile communication has significantly evolved in just a few decades, during which different generations of mobile phone technologies, as well as new telecommunications standards, have come and gone. The first generation systems, which appeared in the 1980s under the name 1G, have allowed us to have a completely wireless phone. The problem with these phones was that they could only transmit analog signal and could only handle voice calls. The analog signal can easily be altered from external sources. Therefore, the quality of the communication offered by the first generation of mobile phones, which were very voluminous devices, presented many issues such as the poor audio quality and the frequent interruptions. In order to improve transmission quality, system capacity and signal coverage, the second generation of 2G mobile networks has marked a breaking point with the previous technology, focusing on the digital switchover introduced by the GSM standard. The use of digital technology marked the birth of the first data transmission services in the form of text messaging service, SMS, MMS, and wireless application protocol, which is the standard that allowed us to access for the first time special web content from our mobile phones. The 3G technology introduced in the early 2000s allowed us to offer a further speeding up of data transfer thanks to the introduction of the WCDMA protocol and is a particular technology 
that increases data transmission rates in GSM systems, a further increase in bandwidth has allowed the 3G phones to have a data transmission speed of 2 megabits per second. Useful for sending and receiving GPS signals, videos, and voice calls. 3G technology actually marks the transition from the common mobile phone to the current smartphone. The acronym 4G identifies the fourth and current generation of mobile telephone services. This technology allows smartphones to have data rates from 20 to 100 megabits per second, suitable for television and high-resolution movies. The feature of the next 5G generation that will differentiate it from previous communication standards is its connection speed. The 5G, in fact, should be between 100 and 1,000 times faster than 4G. The 5G, in fact, will take advantage of the millimeter wave, which is the band of spectrum between 30 gigahertz and 300 gigahertz, the highest possible frequency spectrum. 5G will represent the communicative standard designed for the Internet of Things and home automation. Finally, if you found this video useful, let us know by leaving a comment and subscribing to our YouTube channel to stay tuned on the latest release of new videos. Thanks for watching.